Uh, Get instant access to your winnings with Cash Card Plus, Paddy's brand new card, available to use at ATMs, online or in shops. TNC Supply, 18plusgambleaware.co.uk. Welcome back to The Postcast with me, Mark Storey. I'm here with Frank Hickey from Paddy Power and the Racing Post's very own Paul Keeley and David Jennings. Now, Sunday's a special day for ITV. They're back broadcasting racing um, and they're at a very good meeting at Cheltenham, that cracker on New Year's Day. Um, let's kick off with the dipper. Uh, Paul, um, it's a small field, but a good one. Yeah, it's a very, it, it is a very, very good race. Um, Clandes Obo absolutely bolted up at Newby last time. I don't know whether he's going to turn into one of these Nichols horses that has to, you know, needs a flat galloping track or not. But he was really, really impressive. And and, and then you've got Whisper, who didn't take the chase when he first tried mm. it, but but jumped really well and was really, really well backed when he won here last time. And you know, he was, a, you know, he was, a, he was border, bordering on a 170 horse over hurdles at, at one stage in his life. I think he was, his, his highest rating was 167 or something. You know, he's you know he's he's ten. Well, he's nine. So he he, he turns nine and, uh, on Sunday. Um, so he's a bit long in the tooth to be going novice chasing, but he's very decent. And then you have got this Briary Bell, uh, who who I think she was in a listed chase the other day and was pulled out as well. Mm. Um, she's got you know she's got some decent form and she's you know she's a strong stayer. Um, I find it a hard race. I, w I probably won't be having a bet in it. I'd, I'd like to see Glenda's Oboe do it mm. at a course like Cheltenham. Yeah. DJ? Yeah, it's funny. Every so often, uh, I get the urge to tweet about a horse. I, I put my neck on the line. Oh, I've done yeah. it twice in the last two They've months. They've both won, haven't they? And both of them have actually yeah. won. Uh, it was Capitan in the grade two herd at Ascot, which, who I couldn't believe was the price he was. Uh, he was 10 to 1. And the other one, would you believe, was Candace Obo when he won yeah. at Newbury. And uh, I actually think I put up that, that 4 to 1. He was priced up the night before, 9 to 2 was a, was a huge price. He went off 5 to 2. And he duly bolted up. Uh, I just absolutely love Clandes Obo. I would nearly dump Aoife for Clandes Obo. <laughs> like, he is just the most gorgeous horse. I, it's just, he remind, his jumping actually reminded me of Duvan's jumping when he won at Newbury. It was just effortless. Every time he got to a fence, he was on the perfect stride. And Sean Bowen didn't even have to do anything to get him on the perfect stride. It was just all effortless. Now, as Paul said, he has to go and do it now. You know, that, that, was, that was a race that probably fell apart a little bit. He was mightily impressive, but he has to go and do it. And this is where he has to do it. Um, like, he's probably not one to be taking a short price about because, you know, it's, it's all promise rather than stuff he's done already. So um, I just think he has the makings of an absolute smashing horse. I could see him running the Gold Cup someday. He just needs to go and do it. I, I, like, I won't be backing him because he'd probably be a short price. Yeah. Will, he be, will he be that short? Ah, he'd be There's even some good there. horses. He'd you, be six to four you shorter. Know, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I'd, I'd take him on if he was that short. Yeah, he will be that short. I think, it's, um, I think it's quite a tight little race apart from the bottom one. Frank, have you got prices and, and a view on the race as well? We haven't the price stopped just yet. No. I, I do have a view. Clanders or Ball will win mm. this, I think. Um, mm. You couldn't just be but be blown away by him at Newbury. And while the race kind of fell apart, yeah. I think Whisper's rate fell up race kind of wasn't the strongest either Baron Dalco was giving him uh, was it five or seven pounds the last day and I'd say he's a very good handicapper at best oh seven was disappointing at Doncaster um getting the five pounds I think clan so would be very difficult to beat and um you can see him being a big contender for the JLT yeah I was actually stood by the last fence at Newbury I like to go over for that meeting and go over to the other fence on the far side and I, I saw him come over that and um I wouldn't argue with your assessments from just um, what I saw there but uh the two o'clock at, uh, at Cheltenham, um, uh, Frank, um, the uh, Festival Betting Handicap Chase. Um, what's your take on that with Village Vic in there? Very intriguing runner. Yeah, like it's in, a lot of these have been running against each other. And mm. like Village Vic might prefer a small bit softer than what it's going to be. It's good at the moment. I don't think there's much rain forecast. I don't know. Do you have anything on the weather front there? Uh, I, I had a look early on this morning. They, they, they said maybe three to six mil um, either morning or afternoon on Sunday. So but certainly none before, uh, yeah. so whether it'll get in, but we know how quickly it gets in there, don't we? Yeah, yeah, but like yeah. In, just, just when I was looking through the race, I thought, like, obviously, obviously as to me, was very impressive at Aintree, but that might just be his track. Um, yeah, he's not like, always done it at Cheltenham, has he? No, no, I know he was second once to more of that, but how strong was that for him? I, I'd give one a, a squeak at a big, at a massive price, potentially, I'm probably being a bit stupid here, even tipping them up. But Thomas Crapper don't ran. Don't Crapper. say that. That's mine. No. That's Thomas <laughs> Crapper ran okay in sixth in the Ben Victor Gold Cup, and thank God he went first here. <laughs> and he's off oh, ten Crapper. stone. <laughs> bang off ten stone here on one three three. He got dropped a pound for that run. The ground is more in his favour here, and I think he can go well at a big price. David, who do you fancy? 
Oh, no. <laughs> Look, actually, I actually think Al is the most likely winner. I, I know you said about um, him not liking Cheltenham, but I said it before in the postcast. In that, in that best fixer Gold Cup, anything that could have went wrong did go wrong. He ran up the arse with so many horses jumping fences. And I still think off 145, that he could have about 4 or 5 pounds in hand. But at the prices, which might be shorter now since, uh, <laughs> since two fine judges like myself and Frank are going to tip him up. <laughs> Thomas Crapper off 133. He absolutely loves Cheltenham. He loves these type of races. I thought he ran really well in the Beth Victor Gold Cup, to be honest with you. 33 to 1 that day. Um, he had to kind of be switched after the third last, if you remember. And he actually looked like he was going to finish a lot closer than he did. He was beaten 15 lengths. But he's been dropped a pound and he finished sixth. Um, I think everything is in his favour, to be honest, which I'd be surprised if he didn't finish in the first three and he's likely to be about 16 to 1. I think Al will probably win, but I think Thomas Crapper, the price, is, is, is definitely going to be in the shake-up. You on the Crapper too, Paul? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I spent my life on the Crapper, but... Uh, we were, uh, yeah, I mean, he's won, look, he's, won two, he's won two handicap hurdles on the old course at Cheltenham. He's been second at the Cheltenham Festival on both the new and the old course. Second at Don Pony uh, over hurdles, second at Irish yeah. Cavalier in the novice handicap chase. Uh, all on decent ground, and the ground is going to be better than when he was uh, than when he was six in the, in the Paddy Power. Uh, I think if he's ever going to win a big race at Cheltenham, he's going to be on Sunday. Uh, I give him a big chance. I don't necessarily agree about Asdemi being most likely winner. I think the most likely winner is probably quite by chance, who I thought was unlucky in the Caspian Caviar. Uh, and, you know, if he, if he hadn't made a mistake at the wrong time, he'd have gone very, yeah. very you know, a lot closer than he did. Um, but I think that would be reflected in the market too. Uh, I don't know. What, my, well, I don't know what to make of Vanateur anymore. I thought he might have, you know, developed into Horrible some yeah. sort of danger to to Duvan. But I think my original opinion of him that he was a bit doggy was uh, probably more right than wrong. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'll go with Thomas Crapper each way. He's got to be. He's got to be the value. Three mile handicap hurdle next. Three mile handicap hurdle. Yeah. <laughs> I keep looking at Fingal Bay and thinking he's going to, got to bounce back at some stage, but his running's been so bad lately. Um, so I'm actually going to give this race a miss. I couldn't make head or tail of it, to be honest. DJ? Sorry, I just had a piece of brown bread there. I thought Paul was going to talk for longer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's funny, I fancy, I've written down here, I fancy um, five horses, quite, four of them quite strongly at Cheltenham, uh, but none of them in, that, in this race. Uh, do you want me to go through the others? What, the others at Cheltenham? In a minute, yeah. in a minute. Let's go to Frank first. OK. Frank, this, um, you got something in this on telly? A, a call to order has to win, I think, doesn't he? Um, he won very easy the last day. You call him the winner a long way out. And he got, was it seven pounds only? I think okay. um, carrying 10-9, I think he'll be very difficult to beat. OK, uh, Frank, I'll stay with you for the rail keel uh, and any other views on Cheltenham. Um, the rail keel, well, <laughs> he doesn't win often, but you have to say Little Rockefeller always gives us running, doesn't he? Um, and, and I know last year, I think he was, was he second to camping ground last yeah. year? Um, but the ground was heavy that day, which would have suited camping ground. I know the ground was going to be good, possibly good to soft come Sunday. Um, and I, I just think he's the most solid in a race where Cull Harden probably isn't the most reliable anymore and Lammy Surge isn't one either you'd be uh, relying on. So Little Rockefeller, I think is the most solid option, the Rel Keel. Um, I thought Arpege de Lin is running off 140 in the 12.50, the handicap chase. Mm -hmm. um, he was second in the pretense off 146. And he ran okay the last day. I know you might have thought he was disappointed beat by single farm payment, but I think 140 is a very lenient mark. I think he has to go well. Um, and I would give Minotaur a squeak in the 12.15. Um, I think there's doubts about a lot of the ones that have won already. They've not been the most reliable. And he was second at entry behind a uh, well-touted um, horse called Charlemar. Um, but he's going to be getting upwards of £10 off some of these. And uh, I think he'll go well. He might be an each way price as well. Paul, how do you see the well kill being, being uh, I mean, I'm, I'm absolutely with Frank. I think, you know, not only is he the most likely to run a race, but he also deserves to win more than any other um, little Rockefeller. Just mm. puts, it, puts it all yeah. in all the time. And, no, you know, the, the, the others just don't 100% go. Lammy Surge is coming back because he jumped terribly mm. over fences. Cole Hard jumped terribly over fences last time. I mean, you know, they might come back. Camping ground on soft ground. Old Guard seems to have gone up the game. Others don't really look good enough. I think Protect the Flow will be a big improver, mm. but you know he's rated £23 below yeah. Little Rockefeller, so he's got to be a big improver very quickly. 
Uh, so I'd say Little Rockefeller for that. Anything else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, opening race. Uh, I thought Poetic Rhythm ran, ran a really, really nice race on a debut over hurdles. She was obviously she was a fair way behind Ping Shu in the end. I think Ping, yeah. I think beat in eight lengths. Right? But she's a she's a point winner, and she's going to absolutely relish to step up and trip. And if you if you watched her bumpers, particularly the second one of them at Cheltenham, she's got a really good attitude. Really sticks her neck out. So I think she might improve past a few of those and, and get in a frame at least. A decent price. Uh, definitely with Frank in the 1250, Arpeggio Lane, I think, is an absolute certainty. I really, really do like single farm payment, uh, who, who he was second to last time. I think the extra distance is going to suit. Um, Paul Nichols obviously had him in the Welsh National, but said, you know, he, he wants better ground. We're going mm. we're, we're to go to Cheltenham with him. They're talking about the four mile, they're talking about the Scottish National. Um, I think 140 just, you just badly underestimates him. Uh, and You've got uh, the bumper as well. We've we got the bumper. I don't think I've got anything in the bumper. No, I haven't looked at the bumper. None of them, you know, none of them have run that much. No. Yeah, so Fargo Bright one's interesting there, isn't it? Um, just on his strike rate this year. Oh, he's, God, yeah, yeah. He's 28% yeah. in bumpers yeah. this year, which is phenomenal yeah. for a year like that. And that capsule didn't come off the bumper when winning on debut. Now it's a tougher race, but she gets the weight and she might be interesting. What are you back in, DJ? Oh, this card, this is going to make or break my 2017, I think, to be honest with you. It's that, like, it's one of these weekends where, I, like, Friday morning, the decks come out between, just say, mm. half 10 and half 11 in Ireland and England. And it's just every single horse, like, that I've been waiting on seems to be running. As Frank said, Minotaur in the first race loved mm. its first run at, at, at Aintree. Mm. And uh, those that have won haven't really, like overwhelm me so I, I think Minotaur would be very interesting that opener yeah. I think the best handicap chaser in England who I've said already runs in the 12.50 and that's the the hugely um, how would you describe I don't know what word you use to describe him is Dr. Harper um, look the thing about Dr. Harper is he's extremely well handicapped off 136 but he, he's had so many problems um, I thought he this is like he was beaten 29 lengths in that race at the open meeting, that three mile three handicap chase. But if you stop the race at the top of the hill, now I know the winning post isn't at the top of the hill, but if it was at the top of the hill, like he was traveling all over everything and he lost two shoes and his feet were in absolute bits. Um, I said going into that race that I thought he was hugely well handicapped up 138. He's been dropped two pounds to 136. He was due to run at Haydock today, which I thought he was an absolute good thing for a flat track because I think he might be a flat track horse but it was obviously called off, and they have to run here. I think like he, he's going to be a very big price, and I think he's seriously well handicapped. I think he could have a stone in hand when things fall right. It's just a case of getting things to fall right. So I'm going to give Dr. Harper another chance in the 12.50. We spoke about Clan de Zobo. Mm -hmm. um, in the Rel Keel hurdle, lads, Lamy Surge wins this. I don't know what you're talking about, to be honest. <laughs> if you go back through his novice hurdle form, when you actually look at it, you'll be staggered. He beat Kalulta Vic who beat Tisselcrack at Punchestown by seven lengths in the grade two at Ascot. He went on and beat Jolly's Cracked It by 14 lengths at Sandown. He was 7-2 to two for the Supreme Novice Hurdle won by Duvan, where everything went wrong and he was still only fourth. He beat Dr. Harper, who I mentioned earlier then, obviously, over fences by 27 lengths. He was third in the JLT, getting to the front too early. Like, I can see why he's gone back over hurdles, because there's just so many good chasers around at the moment, and there's none of these type of kind of grade two, almost grade one hurdlers around at the minute. There's none of them if you go through the race. He's the best horse in the race. He's rated 152. I know it says that he's got £8 to find on little, Ro little, little Rockefeller, but I don't think he's got the chance to prove that he can be an even better hurdler. I think this is a very shrewd move going back over hurdles, and I think Lammy Surge will win. Excellent. Anything else at Musselburgh? DJ, have you looked at that yet? Uh, no, the only other horse I fancy in England on Sunday is T.O.'s Charm in the 3 o'clock at Exeter. OK, Paul? Uh, yeah, I, quite, I did originally quite like um, Pano Chocolat at uh, Musselburgh, but mm. the ground has dried out now. They got mm. they got showers forecast. If it gets a bit softer, then I think it take the world to beat. And I think I think it'll be favourite. If it stays good ground, I'll be inclined to take him on because all his best form is on soft and heavy. Uh, but but I do you know I do like him overall. Um, I couldn't get that. In fact, you know, I'm I'm fascinated by super, superb story, the County Hurdle mm. winner. Um, but I don't know whether you can back him because you know he was just so bad uh, at, at Galway when he last ran. I don't know what don't know what went wrong there. 
Um, so, you know, I think I'm just going to focus on Cheltenham, to be honest. OK. Frank, anything else? Um, the 105 muscle bra. Now, this one's form figures are similar enough to Mount Brandon. If you look at it, 6 P P P five five and an F. But St. John's point was uh, well fancy the last day of Taunton and it fell. Was it two or three out when travelling well? Yeah. Um, I think that'll go well on the 105. Um, I think the superb story is obviously very interesting in the the 250. They're talking about sending it towards the uh, the champion hurdle, so it really should be winning off 145 up there. And in the 215, um, Big River was off for quite a bit um, before making its reappearance. A Kelson was beaten behind Cool Branca, but it absolutely hacked up yeah, at air up. air the next time. And I think 128. Grand Cockburn takes three off. I think there's plenty more to come from him. I think he'll go well in the 215. And a fairy house, um, put up two so a couple of weeks ago. He got seven pounds. They're stepping him up to three miles. I think he might go in again. Okay, chaps, now for the moment of truth. It's time for the best bet on Sunday. If he doesn't win, I will be absolutely staggered. I think he's a stone cold certainty. Well, Paul, follow that. Yeah, well, I think we've probably tipped about 48 horses between us. <laughs> but I'm going to say, I am going to say Arpez de Len. I think he's fantastically well handicapped off 140 in the 12.50 at Cheltenham. Frank? I'm going to give two, if, you, if that's okay. Um, call to order in the 235, I think seven pounds is lenient. And going back to Saturday, Robin yeah. Rowe is Robin a steering Rowe. job. A steering uh, job. And I'll tell you why, quickly. Um, he beat, no comment, by 15 lengths. At entry, and to be fair, Barry stopped riding no comment once he's beat. But when you look at it, they jumped the last up sides, and in about 10, 10 strides, he was five lengths clear. Mm -hmm. um, now, no comment beat Mona Lee in a bumper at Punchestown. Mona Lee was second to Death Duty, invitation only was third. They're all in around the second, same price for the Neptune. Now, I'm murder for having poor multi bets for Cheltenham early, <laughs> but I rarely have a single. And I can tell you, I've had a single in Robin Row last week. Wow. Um, this wins. DJ, come on, follow that well, one. Well, this is unbelievable, right? We've probably done the f podcast for 52 weeks yeah. of the year. Yeah. 52 weeks. And every one of them 52 weeks, it was Saturday's best bet. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Oh. And then all of a sudden, when I have my strongest fancy the whole year on a Saturday, it turns into <laughs> Sunday's best bet. I give us Saturday <laughs> and Sunday. Go on. Which is unbelievable. Come on. <clears throat> Oh, aquitude, lad. Aquitude. I cannot wait to come on and talk on Monday, hopefully on the right. review podcast. Okay. Where you can be telling me, lads, fair play to that's you, David, okay, for taking out Aquadude. So, Aquadude in the, what time is it? Aquadude in the 12.40 at Newbury come on. on Saturday. Hurry up, come on. And then on Sunday, Sunday um, I'm going to go for Lammy Surge in the Relkeel Hurdle at 3.10. Oh, brave. Okay, thank you. Excellent. Well, that's all from us now. We've had a great chat here. Lots of tips, as Paul said. I think it's 53 altogether. Um, so, listen in again on Monday for our review show. See you later. The Race and Post cast in association with Paddy Power. They prize support UK and Irish racing the night before.